Hi Camp Corey, it's so good to see everyone. My name is Rose. You might remember me as an activity counselor from the summer. If not, it's totally fine. It is great to meet you. I also have here with me my warm fuzzy. We are being very fuzzy together today. And <laughs> my warm fuzzy is going to help me share a story because I'm not super used to making videos, so I need a little bit of courage. I also have a lovely crown on. If you want to make one too, it goes with our story that we'll be reading today. And I have a little clip that will just go over how to make a crown like this one or however you want it to look. All right, guys. So if you want to, you can make a crown to go with the story we're going to read. You'll need some paper, a pencil, some scissors, and maybe some tape or a stapler to put the crown together with. And then, of course, with Ever material you want to use to decorate your crown. So that can be color pencils, sparkles, stickers, whatever you want. Before you start making the crown, you will want to figure out how big you need it to be. So you might need someone to help you. You'll just hold the paper up around your head and figure out if you need one, two, three pieces of paper to make it fit. Then you can trace your crown out and start decorating it. Once you're all done, just staple it together at the back and then you're ready. We will be reading today a book called Sleeping Ugly. So this book is actually from when I was little and my sisters used to read this book and many others to me. I have four older sisters and we loved story time. We would read everywhere we went, in the bathtub, um, on hikes, in the car, waiting for our mom to finish grocery shopping, anywhere and everywhere we would share stories. I still love sharing stories and I hope to share this one with you today. So let's begin. Sleeping Ugly by Jane Yolen. Princess Miserella was a beautiful princess. If you counted her eyes and nose and all the way down to her toes. But inside, where it's hard to see, she was the meanest, wickedest, and most worthless princess around. She liked stepping on dogs and kicking kittens. She threw pies in the cook's face and she never, not ever, said thank you or please and besides, she told lies. In the very same kingdom, in the middle of the woods, lived a poor orphan named Plain Jane. She certainly was. Her hair was short, and her nose was long and turned up, and even if they had been the other way around, she would not have been a great beauty. But she loved animals, and she was always kind to strange old ladies. One day, Princess Miserella rode out of the palace in a huff. A huff is not a kind of carriage. It is a kind of temper tantrum. She usually her usual kind. She rode and rode and rode, looking beautiful as always, even with her hair in tangles. She rode right into the middle of the woods and was soon lost. She got off her horse and slapped it sharply for losing the way. But the horse did nothing but ran right back home. I ha it had known the way back all the time, but it was not about to tell Miserella. So there was the princess lost in the dark woods. It made her look even prettier. Suddenly, Princess Miserella tripped over a little old lady asleep under a tree. Now little old ladies who sleep under trees deep in the dark woods are almost always fairies in disguise. Miserella guessed who the little old lady was, but she did not care, and she did not care at all. She kicked the old lady on the bottom of her feet. Get up and take me home, said the princess. She told the old lady 
so the old lady got off her feet. Very slowly, from the bo- for the bottom now hurts. She took Miserella by the hand. She used only her thumb and second finger to hold Miserella's hands. Fairies know quite a bit about that kind of princess. They walked and walked even deeper into the woods. There they found a little house. It was plain Jane's house. It was dreary. The floor sank, the wall stank, and the roof leaked even on summer days. But Jane made the best of it. She planted roses around the door, and little animals and birds made their home with her. That may be why the floor stank and the walls stank, but no one complained. This is not my home, said Miserella with a sniff. Nor mine, said the fairy. They walked in without knocking, and there was Jane. It's mine, she said. The princess looked at Jane, down and up, up and down. Take me home, said Miserella, and as a reward, I will make you my maid. Plain Jane smiled, a thin little smile. It did not improve her looks or the princess's mood. Some reward, said the fairy to herself out loud, she said. If you could take both of us home, I could probably squeeze out a wish or two. Make it three, said Miserella to the fairy, and I'll get us home. Plain Jane smiled again. The birds began to sing. My home is your home, said Jane. I like your manners, said the fairy, and for the good thoughts, I'll give you three wishes to you. Princess Miserella was not pleased. She stamped her foot. Do that again, said the fairy, taking her pine wand from her pocket, and I'll turn your foot to stone. Just to be mean, Miserella stamped her foot again. It turned to stone. Plain Jane sighed. My first wish is for you to change her foot back. The fairy made a face. I like your manners, but not your taste, she said to Jane. Still, a wish is a wish. The fairy moved to the wand. The princess shook her foot, and it was no longer made of stone. Guess my foot fell asleep uh, for a moment, said Miserella. She really liked to lie. Besides, the princess said, that was a stupid way to waste a wish. The fairy was angry. Do not call someone stupid unless you have been properly introduced, she said, or as a member of the family. Stupid, 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 said Miserella. She hated to be told what to do. Say stupid again, warned the fairy, holding up her wand, and I will make toads come out of your mouth. Stupid, shouted Miserella. As she said it, the great big toad dropped right out of her mouth. Cute, said Jane, picking up the toad, and I do like today, but... But, asked the the fairy. Miserella did not open her mouth. Toads were among her least favorite animals. But, said Plain Jane, my second wish is that you get rid of the mouth toads. She is lucky it wasn't a mouth elephant, mumbled the fairy. She waved the pine wand. Miserella opened her mouth slowly. Not a thing came out but her tongue, and she pointed it at the fairy. Princess Miserella looked miserable. That made her look beautiful, too. I definitely had had enough, she said. I want to go home. She grabbed plain Jane's arm. Gently, gently, said the old fairy, shaking her head. If you're not going to be gentle with magic, none of us will go anywhere. You can go where you want, said Miserella, but there is only one place I want to go. 
to sleep, said Fairy, who was now much too mad to remember to be gentle. She waved her wand and had in so hard that she hit the wall of, of Jane's house. The wall broke. The wand broke. The spell broke. And before Jane could make her third wish, all three of them were asleep. It was one of those famous hundred-year naps that needed a prince and a kiss to end them. So they slept and slept in the cottage in the woods. They slept through the three and a half wars, one plague, six new kings, the invention of the sewing machine, and the discovery of a new continent. That's a lot to sleep through. The cottage was deep in the woods, a very and very few princes passed by, and none of the ones who did even tried the door. At the end of a hundred one hundred years, the prince named Jojo, who wanted the was the youngest son of a youngest son, so he had no gold or jewels or property to speak of, came into the woods. It began to rain. So he stepped into the cottage over the broken wall. He saw the three women asleep with spider webs holding them to the floor. One of them was a beautiful princess. Being the kind of young man who reads fairy tales, Jojo knew just what to do. But because he was the youngest of a youngest son with no gold or jewels or property to speak of, he had never kissed anyone before, except his mother, which didn't count, and his father, who had a beard. Jojo thought he should practice before he tried kissing the princess. He also wondered if she would like marrying a prince with no property or gold or jewels to speak of. Jojo knew with princesses that sort of thing really matters, so he puckered up his lips and kissed the old fairy on the nose. It was quite pleasant. She smelled slightly of cinnamon. He moved to Jane. He puckered up his lips and kissed her on the mouth. It was delightful and smelled of wild flowers. He moved on to the beautiful princess. Just then, the fairy and plain Jane woke up. Prince Jojo's kisses had worked. The fairy picked up the piece of her wand Jane looked at the princess, the prince, and remembered the kiss, as if it were a dream. I wish he loved me, she said softly to herself. Good wish, said the fairy to herself. She waved the two pieces of wand gently. The prince looked at Miserella, who was, he, who was having a bad dream and enjoying it. Even frowning when she was beautiful. But Jojo knew that that kind of princess, he had three cousins just like her. Pretty on the outside, but ugly within. He remembered the smell of wild flowers and turned back to Jane. I love you, he said. What's your name? So they lived happily ever after in Jane's cottage. The prince fixed the roof and the wall and built a house next door for the old fairy. They used the sleeping princess as a conversation piece. When friends came to visit, or sometimes they stood her up, still fast asleep, in the hallway and let her hold coats and hats. But they never let anyone kiss her awake, not even their children, who numbered three.
moral, let sleeping princesses lie or lying princesses sleep, whichever seems the wisest. The end. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. It's just a fun little silly one. My, From me to you, I send you warm fuzzies. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.